And I know that you can too. You know, this is what was happening in my life. But God, Praise you know. The Lord. Uh, Praise the Lord. Hey, you know, Dana, she was, she had pain. It was at your left breast, honey. Yeah. And when she put her arm up like that, she just about bowled over with pain. Well, we had a special guest at our church this one night. And my dad happened to be in the meeting. And my dad was really and truly a miracle working man. I mean, he believed extraordinarily in what God was able to do. He came out of the Latter Rain movement. You probably have heard of that movement. Well, you know, he comes walking up the aisle. I'm about ready to dismiss the service. He whispers in my ear and he says, there's a woman in the church. He says, she's got breast cancer. Uh, he said, whenever she goes like this, she bows over with pain. And I told him, I said, I said, Dad, I said, that's, that's Dana. And so I called Dana up. And uh, my dad prayed for Dana. That pain went away that night, and it's never been back. Praise God. Praise God. Listen, you are with a group of people here who believe. Amen. You are with a group of people who are here who believe that all things are possible to him that believes, okay? But here's the thing. Yes, we can believe, but will we receive? There's a difference between believing and receiving. We receive by faith. That's how we receive. We receive by faith. Okay? So... Uh, he says uh, in verse 7 that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that's not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It is the gift of God. Not of works lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we walk in them. Wherefore, remember, now, and I like this part of scriptures too, that ye being in time past, in time past, listen, you would not have wanted to know me in time past, you wouldn't have wanted to know me. You know, when I got out of the military, I ran with a, a gang, and mostly Vietnam veterans. And we were a rough crew. We got kicked out of many fine bars. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And the leader of our crew, I mean, he was mean. See, I, I was big and strong in those days. And, I remember this one fight we got into. I mean, the bar emptied out into the street. I mean, it was like something you might see on a TV show, you know? I mean, guys were literally flying over the, the bar, you know? And uh, out in the street, and my buddy says to me, he says, Tony, hold him. Hold him. Hold him. So I hold this guy and whack, that's the friend I had. That's the friend I had, okay? Now listen, this guy was the meanest guy I've ever known in my life. But what happened to him was he got saved. Praise God, praise God. And when I, whenever they said, you know, David got saved, I didn't believe him. <laughs> not David, not him. Well then, he came coming after me. Praise the Lord. And the rest of my friends. And we all got saved. Praise God. We all got saved. But God. Yes. I mean, God saved the whole gang. But God. All right? 
But anyhow, uh, and I love this, uh, in time past, in time past, Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ. There was a time when we were without Christ in this world. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. That's who we were. Right. That's who we were. But now, in verse 13, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. The blood of Jesus. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. He's talking about Jew and Gentile. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man. So making peace. One new man. When you look at the body of Christ, we are one new man. God. Dana and I were traveling through North Carolina, and we stopped in a rest area. And there were these uh, two black sisters, and they had their music pumped up loud. And it was praise music. And they were outside their car, and they were dancing, and they had their hands raised up. You know what I did? I went over and I joined them. Praise the Lord. I joined them. And, you know, I can't dance too good. I can kind of do this. <laughs> one at a time. Just one leg at a, one leg at a time. <laughs> That's about what I can do, okay? And uh, before I know it, the one sister, she was a little bit heavier. <laughs> Not as big as me, but she, she grabbed me, right? And before we, before I know it, we're dancing together. It's more like she's holding me up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you what, you know. And I said to, I said to her, I said, you know, sister, in Christ Jesus, there is no racial divide. Amen. Amen. There is no racial divide. Right. Not in Christ Jesus. Right. And I told her, I said, you know, you're my sister. I said, I love you. Amen. And I said, I probably won't see you in this life, but my dear, I will meet you in the rapture. Amen. <laughs> I will meet you. I will meet you. Amen. So anyhow, uh, as we go on, we're one new man, so making peace, and that, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body, by the cross, Amen. having slain the enmity <laughs> thereby, and came and preached peace to you who were afar off, and to them that were not. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Amen. I can't claim him as my Father only. I know that he's your father too. Amen. He's your father too. And everywhere we go, you know, we meet brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. We meet them. We meet them. And I love verse 19. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. We are together members of the household of God. Amen. Yes, we are members of the household of God. Amen. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, 
in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Real quick, because I want to take time to minister to those that have need. In the household of God, what do you find? Well, we experienced it tonight. We experienced the presence of God. Amen. The presence of God. Okay? Uh, another thing, in the household of God, the Holy Spirit is here. The Holy Spirit is here because He's in us. The Holy Spirit is in us. And you know, because He is in us, all the gifts of the Spirit are here. They just need to be released. Uh, and uh, so some of those gifts of the Spirit, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, gifts of healing, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, Diverse kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. Amen. These are found in the household of God. Amen. Another thing you find in the household of God is Amen. real love. The real true love that is in this world is found in the household of God. Amen. Okay? Uh, the, another thing that's found in the house of God is the Word of God. The Word of God is preached here. I only met your pastor last night. And I know that the Word of God is preached here. I tell you, this is a good pastor right here. I can tell. I could tell immediately. And uh, so the Word of God is found in the household of God. Another thing you find in the household of God is faith. In fact, in Galatians 6.10, Paul calls it the household of faith. The household of faith. Faith is found here. What else is found in the household of God? The real grace of God. And I say the real grace of God because, you know, greasy grace is being taught today. But the real grace of God from Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 15, and I'll paraphrase it. The real grace of God teaches us to say no to sin and yes to righteousness. Amen. If you want a, hey, if you want a nutshell definition of grace, that's what it is. Amen. The real grace of God teaches us to say no to sin and yes to righteousness. What else is found in the household of God? Well, the Bible calls us a pillar of the ground of truth. Okay? The household of God. First of all, it's the church of the living God. That's right. This is a church of the living God. Amen. In the household of God, you find life. You find real life in the household of God. Thank you, Jesus. In the household of God, like I said earlier, there is no racial divide. Not in the real house of God. In the house of God, sometimes, yes, there are disagreements that lead to fights. Sometimes we don't get along too good in the house of God, okay? But remember, you've got to remember, Paul and Barnabas, right? They disagreed concerning Mark. The contention was so sharp between them that they decided to depart from one another. So it happens. It happens among the, the most spiritual of us. But the thing that we maintain is forgiveness and genuine love for the brothers and sisters. Okay? Amen. Why are there fights in the church? Simple enough. Satan opposes the church. He hates the church. Hates the fact that Jesus is building his church and that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Right. He hates brotherly love, Amen. hates unity among the brethren, hates the fact that God loves us, hates the grace of God, hates the fact that in the end we win. Amen. He hates that. Right. Hey, I love the book of Revelation. Amen. I love every part of it. And the, the, my favorite part, it begins in chapter 19, you know, when Jesus returns on the white horse and... Uh, Praise God. Uh, he wins and we win. 
In the house of God, there is healing. Yes. Okay? James 5, verses 14 and 16. Is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. Amen. Yes. So, I assume tonight that everybody here is saved. Is there anybody here who's not saved? Raise your hand. 